lifestyle designer. This is Gavin here with Secrets of Longevity.com. There is something that I came across not too long ago. It's a very strange blog. I forget exactly how I came across it. And yes, it's one of those hyper political Tumblr blogs. I'm sure there's plenty of them out there. You might be familiar with the type of um, mentality I'm thinking of extremely politically correct, etc. And it takes it to the point of an extreme where it just becomes absolutely ridiculous. Now I'd had these ideas formulating in my mind of a vlog I'd make, uh, but it wasn't until just recently that there was this uh, new thing posted online that kind of blew up and is getting a lot of attention, and that brought those ideas back to the forefront of my mind and I wanted to talk about it because it definitely relates to health. Now, first of all, the I'm going to link to both the item that has brought this to the forefront, which is this uh, woman of three children who posted a picture of herself uh, on her Facebook profile. She's very thin and toned and she's had three kids and at the top of the picture it says what's your excuse? And of course it got shared a ton and there was all this hoopla about it and that brought me back to thinking about the second link below which is a blog on Tumblr called This Is Thin Privilege. So it has a bit of a following I guess and both the idea of the Tumblr blog and Part of the reaction to this picture is coming from this mentality which I'm going to be talking about, but I want to preface that by saying that there's absolutely something that is very real called fat shaming. And I absolutely agree that it's horrible, it needs to be addressed at, because it's a growing social issue, uh, it has uh, the emotional ramifications on the person that's happening to, but it is very different from, you know, making fun of someone for their race, their hair color, or any of these other things which are not health related. So this is what it comes down to is that when you have something happening with your body that is appears different to people, if it is a health related thing, then the overall public talk and discussion about it being unhealthy isn't a bad thing. The shaming of it is, just as if you were paraplegic and someone was making fun of you for being in a wheelchair. That's awful. Most of society knows that's not appropriate. But increasingly, we see the issue of fat shaming and that's being addressed and over time, we definitely want to see that get to a point where it's just absolutely not appropriate for people to do that in public. If everyone has those urges to make fun of people for being overweight, that's going to be met with a lot of scorn in public because that's what we have to do. We can't accept these attitudes and publicly we need to ostracize those people that do that. However, you can't have someone who's saying, what's your excuse for becoming fit when she, you know, in her description on the photo talks about how she was a single mom holding down two jobs, she wasn't a professional trainer by any means, but she's been able to uh, create this body for herself even after having these kids, and she's very disciplined in what she does. Now, having that uh, image with that caption is it's just a challenge. And you see it repeated in different ways, but for some reason people are targeting her with so much scorn because they see it as fat shaming, even though it's not. It's simply saying, rise up to the challenge. And I think some of the root cause of this is that people actually do better under different types of motivation. Some of us do better with positive reinforcement, and some people do better with negative reinforcement, saying, you know, buck up, step up. It's more of a militaristic type, boot camp type mentality, and people obviously get drawn to that type of training. And there's people that need a bit of both. That is just a fact about coaching, and I think people who definitely prefer the positive reinforcement based uh, training methods and motivational methods see the sort of harsh, uh, strong type motivational photos, and they get offended by it. And while it's good to say and acknowledge that, yeah, that isn't the way I like to motivate myself, it just doesn't work for me, it's another step out of reason to go, okay, this is wrong because it just simply doesn't work for you. At that point you become oversensitive and you're just projecting your own insecurities onto something and fabricating this uh, harsh uh, imagined scenario which isn't actually fat shaming, it's just uh, motivation to be healthy and fit. So I don't need to say much about actually being overweight and how it's obviously clearly linked with a number of health issues from heart disease to diabetes and a whole range of other metabolic disorders. 
Uh, the same thing could be said about cancer. You definitely don't shame people who are lying in bed with cancer, but no one enables them by saying, oh, you should stay there and keep looking and being in that state. I'm not saying being overweight is anywhere near as dangerous for your health as cancer, but it's, I'm just giving a rough comparison. You could take something that is perhaps more similar, and this is definitely one that's much more prominent, is balding in men. You know, men have to put up with a lot of harsh criticisms of their looks, one of them being their hair on their head, if it's receding, they can get a lot of flack and scorn for it if they don't fully embody it. You see people like uh, Patrick Stewart, maybe Jason Statham, Sean Connery, these are extremely masculine men that have fully embraced what their hair has given them. However, if we look at the um, fundamental underlying factors of hair loss, and while there's a big genetic predisposition towards it, we do understand that it only happens under a, a sort of a body chemistry that's very inflammatory. Uh, slightly out of balance in terms of its hormonal health, and also it, there can be a mineral deficiency component to it as well. So while shaming balding men isn't the appropriate response, we can't just say balding is natural, just let it be. I mean, if you have it and it's gotten to a place because you didn't know about this type of information beforehand, you have what you have. But there's a certain amount of reversal and slowing down of balding that can happen by adjusting your lifestyle methods. So this is a lifestyle issue, and by talking about and telling people to rise to the challenge through whatever means you choose to do if you're a public figure, you can't be uh, harshly criticized like that. It's glossing over the fact that this is about health, not about accepting people's health problems and pretending they don't exist. And when you look at the mentality that's behind such things as that blog I mentioned earlier the, that gave me this whole idea for this rant, uh, the this is thin privilege, there is this growing movement to try and get people to accept obese people, even the health problems with it, and pretend that the health problems don't exist, as if that's just how people are. And this isn't just how people are. That's not how humans survived in nature. We wouldn't be able to survive in nature if we were like that. So somewhere down the line, there's been a change in our lifestyle patterns and habits that has led to uh, diminished thyroid health, which leads to obesity, and just the overall general overconsumption of calories, a pancreas that can't handle this huge amount of carbohydrates most people seem to consume these days, the overconsumption of fructose in uh, simplified forms. So these are just a few things. I'm just giving out some examples, but we need to be realistic about health, not definitely not shame people, but also not pretend that these problems don't exist. And then fall into this ultra politically correct, I, it's not even politically correct, it's political extremism. Uh, it is synonymous with certain other movements that all get lumped into a category of uh, just ridiculous reason and logic. I'm not going to go there in this video of course, but you might have an inkling of what I might be hinting at. But essentially, yes, uh, maybe show this wonderful mother who's done so well for herself some support by liking a Facebook uh, picture and uh, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below because I think this is obviously an ongoing discussion type of issue uh, but yeah let's keep the fat shaming out of any posts for sure and like favorite and share the video if you feel so inclined so with that I'll talk to you next time take care and embrace life without limits